My administration will provide first-time home buyers with $25,000 to help with the down payment on a new home. Okay, $25,000 first-time home buyer a down payment assistance program. That's great, right? Wrong. What happened the last time our government gave out free money? What happened to our economy, our grocery prices, our gas prices? What happened to the value of the dollar? They think the barrier to entry is down payment. It's not. It's affordability. Homes actually go to working and middle class Americans. I understand that. And yes. Working class Americans should have homes, but working class Americans go and make money and then you tax it and then they go spend money and then you tax it again and the person they give it to gets it taxed and then when they spend it, so we don't need $25,000. We need tax cuts, property tax caps. How about that? You guys can cap rents, but you guys aren't going to cap property taxes. The main problem with our housing market is that there is more demand than supply. She did mention supply. While we work on the housing shortage. So we'll give her a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but she only addressed it in the form of building new homes and building new rentals, but building affordable housing. So what you need is you need a builder and a developer that's willing to build these homes and then resell them cheap. Now, after the last time the government gave away free money and we had crazy inflation, all of construction costs skyrocketed. So these builders had to adjust their prices to account for that. So I want elaboration on tax benefits for these builders so that they can provide affordable housing. But I think we should also focus on three other categories. Number one, capital gains. Number two, interest rate. Number three, property taxes. So as a realtor, I talk to a lot of buyers and sellers and a lot of sellers, especially the aging ones say, oh, this home doesn't work for us anymore because of the stairs. We need to move to a single level. But where are we going to go? Because we have a either the home is paid off or they have a great interest rate. So then going over to a new house would just be completely unaffordable, even for them, even for the equity that they have saved in the home which you think they can move, but then over $500,000 on a married couple is again penalized. So I know you're thinking that that's a lot of money, but by chance somebody bought a house for $40,000 and now it's the value has just gone up and now they're responsible for this giant tax bill that a lot of them can't afford, even if you know they have all those proceeds because they have to go towards the new home that is also affected by the raised housing price and then the interest rates that again are you know dictated by the state of our economy are extremely high so they would rather just stay in the home that they have instead of try to go get a new one so again low inventory low supply now let's flood the market with a bunch of buyers that couldn't qualify before but now they do because they've just been gifted twenty five thousand dollars even if aspiring homeowners say for years it often still is not enough. Why? Why is it not enough? This is not a political post. I've just often found that you get certain people in government that don't have an education on economics and they don't even know the tax code. They're all on W-2, so they don't know what goes on for like 1099 and schedule C's and all that. And I'm not a tax expert myself, but what I can tell you is when you're on a W-2, you actually have no idea what self-employed people have to go through. Also having been in real estate for some time, so I'm a real estate broker in Oregon and Washington. I have done resale, which is a regular home. I've also done new construction, which is what it sounds like they're proposing, kind of building our communities of brand new homes and making it affordable. There's just a vast difference on lifestyle. Now, of course, if the option is renting versus owning your home, you're going to give up the backyard. You're going to give up um, a lot of the benefits that come with having a more established home. I've also noticed having done a lot of inspections on homes that I help people buy and sell, these new construction homes. Now, again, if the agenda is to push affordable housing, right? How are you going to do that? Are you going to force builders 
to keep prices low? Are you going to cap that? So are you not going to do anything to fix that, you know, housing materials have gone up by 60%? Their cost of building increases, you're capping what they could sell it at because you're trying to push affordable housing. Are they going to build houses out of like paper and popsicle sticks? Because unless you're providing incentives for builders to build high quality homes because of inflation that was caused by you, they're not going to build high quality homes. It'll just be a bunch of this. Anyways, let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe I'm just totally off the mark. Maybe all we need is an extra $25,000 to first time home buyers and that's going to fix everything.